Hi everyone, Sharon Brennan here, Cottage Lane Stamper. Welcome to my Tuesdays at 2 um, live, Facebook Live. Um, let's see if I can find myself on my tablet here. Well, everybody kind of hops on. Let's see. There we are. So, how's everyone today? It snowed yesterday, and thankfully now it's it's, it's melting outside, so it's kind of great. I have something kind of fun today. Um, it's not a stamp set per se. Um, I did use some of the um, ice sweet. I can't remember. Sweet ice cream is the stamp set, and ice cream corner is the sweet. So I did use a little bit of that, and I. Um, if you were with me last week, you saw part of that um, sweet. Anyway, um, let's see if anybody has got any comments. Um, so, we'll just pop right to it. Oh, before we go any further, I just want to mention, today is March 16th, tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day. Stampin' Up! is... Um, offering free shipping on all orders over $50. So um, that's before tax. So anytime tomorrow, if you place an order over $50, you get free shipping and that's pretty pretty good deal, I think. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, if you purchase a bundle from me, um, you get the, um, this week, you'll get the free PDF from today's class. So, and it's like nine pages long. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, let's get to it. My phone is ringing, but the voice may will get. May will catch it. So, I'm waiting to see if this shows up here on my screen. I never. I try to keep it not moving it around during the week, but sometimes things happen. So, um. It's my grand, my oldest grandson's 15th birthday. And when I made this, I really didn't have him in mind, but then I thought, well, I may as well use it for him. And um, I'm making another one today, so let's see. This is called, this is um, part of the sweet ice cream, or the ice cream corner sweet. That's in the January to June uh, mini catalog. And let's see if I... Got this centered here. So I'm just gonna move it just a bit more. Um, it's called an explosion box. So you lift the lid off, and voila, there it is. So I'm gonna make one of these today, not with the, all the photographs and stuff, obviously, but a lot of people, these are really popular right now, and a lot of people are. Um, using them for gender reveal um, so you could put whatever gender is in the middle blue or pink um, birthday gift that's what this is going to be mother's day father's day you can even use these for easter and some of them you just use them for memory keeping so i put some of my favorite photos of my grandson in this so i might even we could I've done like there's like six boxes here so I might just put a lid I might just make a lid for each of these boxes too so that they would fall down and take one off and they just fall down like a domino effect so let us get started and like I said this is gonna be a little time consuming today so um, I hope you bear with me so we're going to start out with um, some pattern paper and I, I chose, I had one pattern paper chosen but I decided and it was kind of dark but I wanted to go with a lighter color. Um, this is from the mm, Friends um, or like Seashell Suite. So I'm going to make six different boxes. 
So you're going to need a, a sheet of 12 by 12 for the outside box and a sheet of 11 by 11, 10 by 10, 9 by 9, 8 by 8, and 6 by 6. And this will be the inside, no, 7 by 7, sorry. 6x6 six six and 7x7, seven seven, and I should have done those the other way around. But anyway, um, I'll put the process notes off to the side, so hopefully you'll be able to, to see them. So we're going to start with the... Um, oh, and then another sheet of 6x6 six six for the outside lid. So we're going to start with... The 12 by 12, and if you have a scoring, um, a scoreboard, then <laughs> simply score it, I guess is what they're called. You can use this, and oh, my little, there it is. I thought I lost my scoring tool. So the first one, we're going to score at four inches all the way around. So four. Now, if we don't have this um, scoring tool, simply scored, you could also use your paper trimmer, or you could use um, a ruler and, for the smaller pieces, um, your paper piercing mat underneath, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So, I'm going to decide what's going to be the outside, so I think I want the seashells on the outside. So what we're going to do next is take a heart, and this is, you can use, um, oops. hi Diane, uh, the sweet and sassy hearts, which are a little bit, almost a little bit too small, um, but if you, you start, and if you get the PDF, um, I will have, there is a heart um, on the bottom of it. So we're going to take this heart and we're going to, if you can see that, we're going to line it up in the corner where the score marks are. So you want to make sure that the edges of the heart are inside and we're going to trace around this, all four corners. So starting at this score mark, let's trace here and here. And do that all the way around. So center it along the score lines. And make sure that the edges of the heart are inside the box. And we're going to... You could also cut out your own heart if you wanted to. Um, if you use the one that's in the PDF, make sure that you... Um, Use heavy cardstock. You can barely see my score line there. Heavy cardstock or chipboard or something like that. Or um, window sheet. Something that'll be um, firm to trace around. So and you don't have to do this. I just think it kind of gives it a little bit of a, a little extra something. Again with that, and this is the largest set. If you have this retired set, it's the um, Hearts Collection. So I don't know, I've had it forever, so I don't know how old it is. Um, if you want this particular one, you may be able to find it on eBay or one of the Facebook selling Facebook groups that sell retired things. Then we're going to cut our hearts out around the heart. I'm on the way here. So Diane, if you missed it, I know you said something about replacing some of your supplies. 
um, tomorrow, if you place an order over $50, it's free shipping. So, you know, I'm going to cut down there. So that would save you a bunch of money. scissors because the fine points that they have on them you can get right in there right up to the edge and do some really fine cutting and they're so sharp super sharp I bought other scissors and um, I haven't found any else I like as well so and looks like I forgot to trace around here, so I'm just going to add lid here. And I'm actually left-handed, but when I grew up, they didn't have scissors for left-handed people. So all us left-handers had to learn to cut with our right hand. So... frame here. Cut it a little bit more. There. And the last one on the edge. I love this paper. It is so gorgeous. Um, I'm going to have to order some more of this. There's so many papers that I've used. I used almost all the um, ice cream paper up already. <laughs> so, if you um, don't have Stampin' Up! paper, I'd, uh, I would recommend getting a pack of, um, and using one pack like I did this one, um, because then all your colors are going to coordinate. So, then we're going to fold this up. Isn't it gorgeous? And I think I forgot what I was going I missed. And I forgot to, we're going to need to um, score here diagonally. So I'm going to get my scoring tool back here. And I have the diagonal plate. I don't know that they sell these anymore. Let's see what I do. Yeah, we're gonna find the center. There. And if you don't have this, I'll show you another way. Your paper piercing mat and a ruler. You just line it up from there to there and go along the edge. go like this. Your little heart will fold in. And that is how your box is going to fold. Isn't it adorable? I just love it. It's so cute. So, then when I first made the first one, I went and tried, I glued them down. And like, that was stupid. So then it pops open like that. Okay? So that is 
I'm what I'm calling box one, okay? And we're gonna do six boxes. So boxes two and three are gonna be the same, essentially. Um, this box two and Here's my trimmer here, and we are going to score at, let's see, um, three and five eighths all the way around. So there's three, there's three and a half, there's three and five eighths. Get my cutting blade out of the way. It looks like raindrops or water falling there. Three and a half, three and five eighths. Three and a half. I have to do that because otherwise I get lost. Three and five eighths. So, and then we're going to do box three right away too. And this one is ten by ten and we're scoring it at... Three and a quarter. So three and a quarter. Just gonna grab my scoring tool. <laughs> three and a quarter. We're going to take our ruler and a pencil. I found this is the easiest way to do this and find the scoring lines here. If you can see them. And find the corners and draw a line. Over your finger. <laughs> So there's the score line here, and here's the other one. Here, line it up. Okay. And hi, Jody. And here's and. A score line it's really hard to see and I was gonna use black and white paper and it would be even worse to see there and we're gonna do the same thing with this one this one's a little bit easier to see let's see it doesn't matter which side I cut on so score line it's right there and here And the score line is there and here. And once I lay it down, I can't see my score line there. Okay. And one more. So there is my score line. Now you can actually take your scissors and cut them, or I'm just going to use my paper trimmer and line the score lines up in the with the gutter here. And don't throw those away. You can use them for a card later, or something else, or you can use it to you um, maybe embellish this. We're just cutting off the corners here. All the way around. Now which side? 
should be on the inside. This side or this side? It's hard to decide. They're both pretty. Today is going to take a little bit longer. I thought this is so much fun. And these explosion boxes are, are really popular right now. So then we are going to just going to actually turn off my score lines here. And I'm going to actually take away this because it's just getting in my way. It's turning up at the corners. So there's one. And um, I'm going to put this one I think on the outside. Better to use paper that doesn't have a direction on it too, I found. So, so we have this, and now what we're going to do is we're going to cut along these score lines here. Is that right? Yeah, okay. I have to make sure I was doing this right. And these are going to create little pockets. Four lines and two of the sides, so opposite lines. And do that here again. I found this um, while I was sick in January or February. And so it really took me a long time to do one because I just didn't have the energy or the interest to do anything for a long time. <laughs> and to the edge of the score line. So along this score line up to the next score line. There. <laughs> now we're going to, you can use glue or you can use um, tape runner. I am going to actually, what am I going to do? So I need to, so this makes a flap. Make sure I get the glue on the right side. So I'm going to use, I think, um, maybe some tear and tape. So right, run it right along the edge. On top, on the right side of the score line. And I'm not going to worry about the edges because you know what? Well, maybe I will. This one won't worry so much. This one I'm going to need a little on that end. Just because this one's going to hold the other end down. <laughs> it sticks really well, doesn't it? <laughs> so there's one. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So the end and run it from the corner all the way down here. You could use um, some of our stamp and seal and I kind of went over the edge here a little bit. Oh, sorry guys. I went my tablet. A stick. I've never had that stick in my fingers like that before. So this one I went kind of over the edge a little bit. So I'm going to cut it because I'm ripping it. This stuff always happens live. It never happens when you're just doing it by yourself in your craft room. Okay. So I'm going to 
that in and fold that one. So there is box three. Now we're going to do the same thing on this and we're going to try glue this time. So you run a finer line of glue so you can get it going. Oh, I'm doing it on the wrong side. <sighs> Shoot. Dang. Fire. I to, um, to take a Kleenex. I wasn't thinking. Try to wipe that off. And I'll fix this later with one of my, um, my adhesive eraser, so I need to go along this line here. There, that's better. Let's see if we can do the last one perfectly correct. And let's fold that over. And so that makes nice a nice little pocket to put um, something in. A little gift card. Um, um, a gift, you could do a gift card or um, some photos or memories. So we are going to glue these two together. And I like to use glue for this. Because it's a little bit more forgiving. You can slide it around a little bit. And we're going to center this one. And you want these pockets to alternate. So, I'm going to measure from side to side here and side to side here. There. And then we'll take these and put this one in the, the big one that we've already done. Center it side to side, side to side, side to side here, side to side there. Press it down. There we have two of them done. Now the next one is going to be a little different. This will be box number four. And this will have a gate fold. So we are going to score this one. Get my directions here. So messed up. And let's see. This is nine by nine, and this will be scored at three inches all the way around. Then, oops, on two sides, we are going to score it at an inch and a half. And slip it over to the other one. Slip it around, actually. And an inch and a half. Now, this one, I think, is the most fun one to do. Okay, so we have... I think this one for the inside. And this one. And then this. And I'm going to be using a couple tools here. Maybe if you've been scrapbooking a lot, you have these in your stash. I hope so. Um, one I inherited. So we're going to cut out these corners here, these four corners. One, two, three, four. And this is going to be cut, first of all, I'm going to cut all the way up to the three inch score line. 
and then we're going to cut off this little flap here. And we are making a gatefold here. And cut this out. Now normally I don't use tools that aren't in the catalog. I have to stop and think of what I'm doing here. But this one was so much fun that I just wanted to share it with you. I don't always like to share things, show things that aren't in the catalog because then you get frustrated and you can't buy them. But they are available at other craft stores. So. All these little pieces will save. And so this I didn't cut all the way. So these will fold in like this. And these are our little gate folds. So now what I do is I take my um, paper piercing mat and I'm going to measure. This is three inches. I'm measuring an inch and a half down, and I'm just kind of guessing about a quarter of an inch in, and I'm going to mark that. So it'll be um, an inch and a half. And actually, I think I'll just do this right away. I'm going to poke a hole in it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on all four sides. So this is about a quarter of an inch inch and a half, so we'll flip it around, poke a hole, inch and a half, and do that on this side too, so about a quarter of an inch, I should do it this way so you guys can see the numbers, I'm gonna So inch and a half is right about here. And in this side. About a quarter of an inch in it down, quarter of an inch from this edge, and an inch and a half. That's the hardest part of this one. Let's see. Um, so now we're gonna Okay, this you might not have in your stash, and this is called the Crocodile. Um, Stampin' Up! used to carry these, they don't anymore. And it has, you can punch holes with it um, on this side and this side. And we're going to, <laughs> and sometimes the paper gets stuck in there, like there. So. So we're not going to use that side. Okay, we are going to use this side, so hopefully there's no paper in there. Okay, we're going to punch a hole. Center it and punch a hole. Now you could um, use brads here if you don't want to do the crocodile, but I'm going to put rivets in here. I've got a ton of rivets that I inherited, so um, I thought this is a fun way to but you could put brads in here and then, um, wait, oops, no, I still need this, and then wrap twine around. So I found these are some of the old brads that I inherited. And I'm going to use four white ones. And now that I'm on camera, we'll see if I can get this to, to go right. So it sits right on this little platform down there. And the bottom part is the um, right side up. And I'm going to 
put it on this side. So you just line this up with this hole and punch it. And I did it wrong. So it's going to go on this side. <laughs> I shouldn't have said I did it wrong. Should I? So put this here. And I had intended to put the white on the other side. I'm going to put this out. I'm going to just keep everything the same so I don't get too confused because I'm getting elderly. I turn 70 next month. So next week, I should say, a week from today. So this is my last week of being... 69. There. Line that up. And last one. Let's see where it just sits right down there. Hi, Dorothy. And this is going to be stick it in there and pinch it. Now we are done with this. So now we have these cute little rivets on this side. So this is going to be our. <laughs> this is going to be our right side, guys. I bought that backwards. So anyway, let me get these out of here before I spill them all. Over. Now for this, you can use. Um, this ribbon that's in the catalog, um, it's in the, um, let me find the page, I got marked here. So there's this ribbon here, it's called Crinkled Seam Binding, and it's on page 161, and turn this around, and the, or you could use this, um, season ribbon combo. It's a little pretty um, sea spray with metallic thread in it. Or you can use baker's twine. I think I might use this because it's, it's really pretty. And I think I used um, about 8 inches, I think. I don't know if I put that in my directions, but I don't have it on my directions here, but I'm going to do eight inches, so cut it here. And if you're ever wondering, now oh, this is sea spray. Get my fabric scissors out here. If you're ever wondering um, if what colors are in your, or if you're looking for a specific color, there is a way to find it in the search field in on the app. So, um, now, to thread these, I use little floss threaders. So I just take one of these and put my, because I need all the help I can get, obviously. Okay. Make sure I'm pulling it through the right way. And it just, voila, pulls it through really simple. So then we just tie these shut. Isn't that adorable? And you can put a little um a little sentiment behind this, or you can put a picture, uh, whatever your heart desires. So, and we'll do that to the side too. So, eight inches. Cut that off. So this doesn't actually go with this suite, but this color is in this suite. So I use that um, if I'm searching for a, a color in, in some DSP, I, I'll often use that search. You can just put the color you're looking for, and it'll bring up all the DSPs, pattern papers, that have that color, so, which I think is kind of cool. Now, what did I do? <laughs> Let 
do as I say, not as I do. Okay. Let me pull this through. There. And we'll just tie this shut. And then on these two flaps, you can put something else. Now on the PDF, I have also um, the mat, the measurements for um, the photo matting. If you want to put pictures on here or a sentiment and you want it matted, I have the dimensions for that too. So anyway, so fold this in. And I didn't need to score these here, I guess. But that's okay. And we're going to put a little glue on this. And this is the hardest one in the whole deal. And we'll bring our boxes back. And we're going to alternate them again. And center from here to here and here to here. Top to bottom and side to side. Isn't this adorable? Now you could stop right here if you wanted to. You can make as many boxes as you want. I've got a couple more. This one is box five and we scored it two and five eighths. And And this one, I'm actually going to do, let's see, what color should we have on the outside? Let's have this one. I'm going to make this one like um, three and four, I think. So we're going to do, I'm going to cut off the corners again. Line this up. And then you can put like a gift card in this size. This will be just about the perfect size for a gift card. Okay. I'm gonna bring this back in and cut these. So, any of you want to tackle this at home? <laughs> this is pretty much for an avid crafter, and I just I love making boxes. And if you guys want need any boxes, let me know. I have tons of them laying around. I've also made gift bags, so um, I, just, I like the challenge, I guess. So, cut these off again. And I've got some pencil mark on that. I'm going to erase that there. I'm going to trim one again here. Let's see, here, to the corner, on this side, and here. You can make like up to seven boxes, so I'm just doing Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I'm just going to run some glue along here. It's much easier than parent tape. As long as you lay it down in the right place. There. Put that in. Fold that in. 
and then we have it's nice just for like a little um, gift card. Let's see if I have one laying around here. I used to have a bunch of them laying here. I mean, just not real gift cards, but samples. So this would be nice for like a gift card. And I'm gonna put some glue on here. Now, if you missed it earlier, if you're going to place an order soon, I would do it tomorrow. Because tomorrow is shipping. On order is $50 and above. And that is before tax. So that's March 17th. There. Now, isn't it cute? We're going to make one more little box. And... This one is six by six, and we're gonna score it at two inches. So let me bring this one again and score it to Oh crap. You know what? <laughs> I just cut it. Piece of that here. There we go. So this is six by six. I'm going to cut off six by six. That was intentional. I'm glad you guys never mess up like that. And now we're going to score it at two. Get this cutter out of the way. Two inches. Oh, yeah. Oops, sorry. I hate when I bang it like that. Two inches. Two inches. And two inches. So it's, it's going to give me a two inch box and I'm going to, this will be the inside. You can cut a little wedge out of here. Sometimes I like to leave it in because it, if you take it out, it removes the bulk. But sometimes I leave them in so that the boxes are more square. So we're going to put some glue on here and on here. And we're going to close this up, match up the sides. And I like to use little craft close pins to hold it <laughs> together. So here's one and here's the other. And close those together. And there's our little box. I'm just gonna let that sit and dry while we make the lid. Back here. Okay, we're getting close to the end, guys. Okay, this is this is four and a half by four and a half, and we're going to score it at one inch. And this is the lid for this little box we made. So to make sure I don't cut it again, scoring this at one inch. And I'm going to use that broader tip. I don't like to poke through my paper. If you've never noticed, it has one side is a little bit bigger than the other. So, one and one and one. And while I have this out here, this is a piece of cardstock. It is seven by seven. And 
This is for the lid. Oops, no, that's the wrong piece. Uh, this is seven by seven and it scored at one. Is that right? One, two. It's gotta be six and a half. I have the wrong piece of paper here. There we go. I was gonna make another box, but this is six, six and a half by six and a half. And we're gonna score this at one inch also. Make sure I get my broader end again. And one. And we'll make this go together essentially just like the box we did. Now, this is a little different color. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to cut a half an inch off this and do this one. This matches the outside of the box, actually. This is seven by seven, so I need six and a half by six and a half. I think I got my um, little labels mixed up. So, six and a half, or I just changed my mind, I don't know. One or the other, six and a half. Six and a half, scored at one. And we are done with this and put it back in here. It's got a nice little holder there. And the scoring board is, is available at um, online. Take the stampin' up. So now we're gonna take this. And we're gonna do the same thing as we did with the box. And I should have burnished these first. It makes it a little bit easier to burnish when you do it before you cut and do it afterwards. Because then you have all those little flaps, see? See all these little flaps in? <laughs> Hi, Lisa. And this is for the inside box. Burnish first. Just a lid for the little surprise box inside. Now the little surprise box, you can either glue it down, which is what I did, or you can leave it separate. I'm gonna take my little first pin back here. I think I dropped one. And we're gonna I like to square them up. Which is why I don't always um, cut out that little wedge. Because I think they make a nice square little box then. And there's one more, and I dropped one on the floor. And I don't know where it is. So. Not a big deal. And this is the first one I did, so I'll put that there. And then we'll do the same thing with this. And I think I must have cut the paper for the lid a little bit too big. Because it looks like it's a little large for that box. We'll have to redo that. And I'll have the correct measurements in the book in the on the PDF so there. Then yep, my box 
box is a little too big. So, a little too big. I can make another box to fit this one. And this one, I'm going to actually, I'm not going to glue this one in because if I make another box that fits in between, that'll work. So, this would go here. And then you can embellish this however you want. And the best way to close this up is to lay it on its side, take your lid, and tuck it in and bounce it around a little bit. And there it is. There is your explosion box. So I know this is probably twice as long as what I normally do. Here's the one I did for Luke, and it already exploded. Hey, Lisa. And then here's the one we did today. So, and this one was made with the um, ice cream corner sweet paper. And I put this on here. So cool. I just put some of his, some of my favorite photos of him in here. So, and then I used um, the the ice cream um, sweet. And like I said, just fold this up. And tuck it in and there they are so I know that was really long and intense and I'll have the PDF available if you're interested um thanks for stopping in and let me know if you enjoyed this one if you do like to do cleaning projects or not like I said remember tomorrow um for $50 for orders over $50 um before tax there's free shipping so get your order in early so it gets out early um i would do it first thing in the morning if you can they let's see they're ahead of us one one hour so um it would have to be one o'clock here if you want to get up in the middle of the night and do it <laughs> i'm just kidding you <laughs> anyway thanks for stopping in i hope you enjoyed this and uh, take care and may god bless you bye